Good day, everyone. So today, I am going to talk about coccidiosis. In this video presentation, we are going to talk about what is coccidiosis, coccidiosis in other poultry birds, and coccidiosis in cattle and buffaloes. Coccidiosis is an intestinal tract infection caused by a single-celled organism, protozoa called coccidia. It is caused by protozoan parasites from the genus Emeria. These parasites are host-specific and many species occupy a specific segment of the intestinal tract. Coccidiosis may be one of the most common diseases affecting small flocks around the world, causing loss in performance and even mortality. This disease can be complicated by bacterial agents such as Clostridium perfringens. So now let's learn about the life cycle of coccidiosis and how it is transmitted. In the first picture, an infected bird sheds non-infective eggs in feces contaminating the environment. Then after 48 hours, oocysts pullulate and become infective. Then other birds ingest infected oocysts while drinking or eating. And then the oocysts hatch and invade intestinal tissues, causing damage and creating more oocysts. So now let's proceed into the coccidiosis in other poultry birds. Our first example here is the turkeys. Only four of the seven species of coccidia in turkeys are considered pathogenic which are the Emeria adenoids, Emeria dispersa, Emeria galopavonis, and Emeria melegrimides. And the non-pathogenic are Emeria inocua, Emeria melegrimides, and Emeria subrotunda. As what you can see in the picture below, the Emeria adenoids and the Emeria galopavonis infect the lower ilium, seca, and rectum. This species often cause mortality, while the Emeria melagramitis chiefly infects the upper and mid-small intestine, like what you can see in the picture. And lastly is the Emeria dispersa, infects the upper small intestine and causes a creamy mucoid enteritis that involves the entire intestine, including the seca. Common signs in infected flocks include Reduced feed consumption, rapid weight loss, droopiness, ruffled feathers, and severe diarrhea. Wet droppings with mucus are common. Clinical infections are seldom seen in poults, greater than 8 weeks old. Morbidity and mortality may be high. So the next one are the game birds. The Chinese ring neck pheasant, the tukar partridge, and the bobwhite quail are extremely popular as game birds are reared in large numbers under conditions similar to those of chickens. Losses in these birds from coccidiosis often exceed 50% of a flock. In pheasants, the common species are Emeria fashani, Emeria kokaiki, Emeria duodenalis, Emeria tetartoimia, and Emeria pacifica. Two cars are infected by two species which are the Emeria cofoidi and Emeria legionensis. Bobwhite quail are infected mainly by Emeria letea, Emeria dispersa, and Emeria coloni. Treatment and control of this coccidia are similar to that in poultry. However, amprolium appears to be of little use. Monensin and selenomycin are approved drugs for quail and lasalucid and sulfadimethosine are approved drugs for chukars. Next are ducks. A large number of specific coccidia have been reported in both wild and domestic ducks, but validity of some of the descriptions is questionable. Presence of Emeria when Yunella and Tarsiria species polaris has been confirmed. Tarsiria perniciosa is a known pathogen that balloons the entire small intestine with mucohemorrhagic or caseous material. Mia species polaris also have been described as pathogenic. Some species of coccidia of domestic ducks are considered relatively non-pathogenic. In wild ducks, infrequent but dramatic outbreaks of coccidiosis occur in ducklings 2-4 to four weeks old. Morbidity and mortality may be high. For its control, it is dependent on hygiene and good husbandry, such as 
disinfection of housing and good ventilation. Treatment with sulfonamides only in the case of an outbreak as other antioxidants may not be safe to use. And the last one is the geese. The best known coccygeal infection of geese is that produced by Emeria truncata in which the kidneys are enlarged and started with poorly circumscribed yellowish white streaks and spots. The tubules are dilated with masses of oocysts and urates. Mortality may be high. At least five other Emeria species polaris have been reported to parasiticize the intestine of geese, but these are of lesser importance. Now let's proceed in the second part of my report which is the coccygeosis in cattle and buffaloes. Coccygeosis is commonly a disease of young cattle, 1 to 2 months to 1 year old, and usually is sporadic during the wet seasons of the year. Summer coccygeosis and winter coccygeosis in range cattle probably result from severe weather stress and crowding around a limited water source which concentrates the host and parasites within a restricted area. 12 Vimeria species polaris have been identified in the fesses of cattle worldwide but only 3 are most often associated with clinical diseases which are the Ermia zuarinae, Ermia vovis, and Ermia obernensis. The other Ermia species polaris have been shown experimentally to be mildly or moderately pathogenic but are not considered important pathogens. So here are the important species affecting cattle. First, we have Emilia alabimensis. It is an intranocular parasite of the intestinal epithelium cell. Emilia obernensis, Emilia buchidnosis, which is the biggest species. Emilia bovis, commonest and the second most pathogenic species and giant size zone in the small intestine. Emilia brasiliensis, the cup Emilia species. Emilia canadensis, Emilia cylindrica, Emilia ellipsoidalis. Emilia pellita, Emilia subsferica, which is the smallest. And lastly is the Emilia zoarinae, which is the most pathogenic. And here are the important species affecting buffaloes. Emilia ancarensis, Emilia borreilli, which is the most pathogenic, Emilia gugaki, Emilia ovidalis, and Emilia thianethi. Now let's focus on Emilia zoarinae and Emeria vovis. First is the Emeria zoorinae. This is very common coccygia of cattle and buffalo cows. 4 to 18 months are mostly affected. Disease is called red dye sentry or what we call winter coccygiosis. Oocysts are spherical or subspherical, 18 by 16 micro, and mycophile is absent. Oocysts wall is thin, transparent, with homogeneous polar granule. Oocystic and sporocystic residual body are absent. Sporulation time is 48 to 72 hours. For its location, schizogony occurs in lower small intestine and cecum. Gametogony is seen in rectum. Incubation period is 7 to 10 days and prepatent period is 19 to 20 days. Epidemiology more than one asexual generation is seen disease is dependent on conditions which pre precipitate a massive intake of oocysts such as overcrowding in unhygienic yards or feedlots. It may also occur at pasture where livestock congregate around water troughs. Armia zoorinae pathogenesis. It is an acute infection and the most pathogenic coccidia of cattle. Bloody diarrhea in calves, diarrhea becomes more severe, bloody fluid, clots of blood, lifid feces, straining and coughing may cause the mixture to spread out to 6 to 8 feet. Dysentric feces will be matted in perineum. Anemia, weakness, and emaciation accompany dysentery. Secondary infection, especially pneumonia, are common. This acute phase lasts for three to four days. Calves may recover or die. In chronic cases, the diarrhea will be seen, emaciation, dehydration, 
weakness, rough coat, drooping of ear, sunken eyes are the other signs. Now let's proceed with the clinical signs of Emeria's warrene. In acute infections, the Emeria's warrene causes hemorrhagic diarrhea of calves. At first, the feces are straight with blood, but as the diarrhea becomes more severe, bloody fluid, clots of blood, and liquid feces are passed. Tenesmus and coughing can result in the diarrhea being spread out up to 2 to 3 meters. The animal's hindquarters are smeared with red diarrhea. Secondary infections, especially pneumonia, are common. The acute phase may continue for 3 to 4 days. If the calf does not die in 7 to 10 days, it will probably recover. Irmia zoarine may also cause a more chronic form of disease. The area is present, but there is a little or no blood in feces. The animals are emaciated, dehydrated, weak, and listless. Their coats are rough, their eyes are sunken, and their ears drop. So how would we be able to treat it? Treatment of both the above pathogenic species of coxedra is with a sulfonamide, given orally or parenterally, and repeated at half the initial dose level on each of the next two days. Alternatively, the coconate or a combination of aprolium and ethopabate may be used. To control it, just like what we can see in the picture, Prevention is based on good management. In particular, feed troughs and water containers should be moved regularly and bedding kept dry. The next one is the Armea vovis. Its hosts are cattle and buffalo. Morphology. It is bigger in size than Armea zoarinae, 28 by 20 micro, oval in shape. Micropeel is present. Oocyst is colored greenish to yellowish brown. Sporocystic residual body is present, and the sporulation time is 48 to 72 hours. Its location: small intestine, cecum, colon, terminal ileum. Only single asexual generation takes place. Mature schizont is visible to naked eye as whitish balls. And the incubation is 18 days and prepatan period is 21 days. Pathogenesis of Emeria bovis. As what we can see in the sample picture here in the presentation, there's a diarrhea with blood, tenesmus or straining high temperature, over 106 Fahrenheit, severe pathologic changes occur in colon and terminal ileum due to sexual stages. Congestion, edema, thickening of mucosa with petechia or diffuse hemorrhages, sloughing of mucosa. Coxidiosis in cattle infection with single species is rare. Bovine coxidiosis is a disease of young animals, 3 weeks to 6 months. For its treatment and prevention, giving medications such as sulfamazathine, meprocrine, hydrocolide, and aprolium would be a big help, and also a sanitation and isolation. So that's it for today's video, and I hope you have learned a lot of things about my report. Thank you, and God bless.